Greg Nelson. It's In the Clinch with Team Academy, where we tackle and grapple everything martial arts. We're going to be going over a bunch of stuff, but first, let's give some props to our sponsors. All right, so we got ZebraMats.com for all your mats, bags, bag racks, cage panels, anything you need to set up your gym. Go to ZebraMats.com. Right, we have TieBoxing.com with WTBA, the World Thai Boxing Association. CSW with EricPaulson.com. Right, and then PedroSauer.com for all of our Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And lastly, the Academy MinMN.com for all the best martial arts in the Midwest. All right. So, yeah, today we had the. Uh picked around a few ideas and we thought that we would uh, talk about the good life and how um, martial arts contributes to living a good life. You know, going back in history, Aristotle, um, one of the questions he tried to answer was what is what does it mean to live a good life? And for him it comes down to sort of like character and uh, developing your yourself to the highest level of character and um, to really to flourish, right? And in my experience, I think that martial arts has given me a really good life. And I think a lot of our students and uh, friends and, and other people that we come into contact with have had similar experiences in martial arts. So um, what do you guys think about that? What do you think about martial arts and the good life? But it's really funny bring up that quote from Aristotle because I was starting martial arts. I just had this kind of turnaround in my life where I was a complete out of control nut job in school just got expelled it was the summer I came back kind of turned my life around and I went to the library and I got a book and it was Marcus Aurelius's meditations so it was all on stoic philosophy and all this other stuff and I thought man this is exactly what I'm looking at for for my life you know I want to be like this and martial arts totally lent that lifestyle to me it allowed me to push myself be physically tough it really focused me kept me in a, in line and basically it it basically it straightened me out that was a huge part of it and I consider like wrestling and even gymnastics as part of my martial arts life mm -hmm. so it was huge yeah absolutely I think we were on the same sort of parallel failing out of failing out of seventh and eighth grade and and then finding out wow I can I can get into something and and uh, can really help me so Martial arts definitely kept me in the middle of the road. Why do you think martial arts is different than other um, activities and sports and things that people do? It's individual, um, and, and especially for you know people maybe you know I don't I wouldn't consider myself as crazy. I mean I I was not a perfect kid, but I wouldn't consider myself super crazy. <laughs> um, but definitely like your choices become. Like the right and the wrong choice, I think the more you train becomes clearer. And I've heard that from one of the parents too, that their kids' behavior becomes smarter. Like you become more forward thinking. You think about, oh, you know, should I eat breakfast or not, for example? Or should I, you know, or for kids, you know, brushing their teeth and, you know, picking up their room and doing their homework and stuff like that. Like what is it about martial arts that helps... Um, helps that uh, stuff happen more often than other activities. I think part of the martial arts, we always talk about the tenets of the martial arts. Fortitude, perseverance, courage, integrity, all those things that are so important. They are more stressed, I think, in the martial arts as part of your development. So when the karate instructor or kung fu instructor or even Thai boxing instructor, they're not only trying to teach you how to fight, but they're trying to teach you how to live a better life. And it's part of the arts. I mean, for Why me, do you think those things are in the martial arts? Is that I, just cultural? I think it's a culture, I'm sure, because yeah. it's been passed down through, you know, didn't matter if you were from the Shaolin or even the Samurai, the Shido Code. Mm -hmm. You know, martial arts has always had somewhat of a code attached to it. Yeah. And I think that's a huge, huge thing that changes different. Whereas sports, of course, you have a coach up there and you have rules and regulations, but there's never like a code mm -hmm. they talk about, like a code. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, it's a, it's kind of a different different thing. 
I think also think about starting a class. You don't start a class in wrestling or sports where you line up and you have to bow first. Mm -hmm. You have to show your loyalty and your respect to the, the coach, or mm -hmm. in, in this case, the instructor, which is a different thing that in sports, you just come in, you circle up, and you say, okay, let's go. Right. Although I do see, I feel like I see a lot of elements of character development in sports um, for kids as well, but there is, it seems there's something kind of unique about martial arts and its results, and that's, you know, part of the popularity with, with kids and, and even adults to a, a large extent. I did think um, that martial arts put more emphasis on the individual, too, mm -hmm. rather than just the team. I, I feel like as, a, you're, as an individual, you focused on some of those some of that code a little bit more yeah, as and it applied to I mean, yourself. I, one of the things I think is that I think that from a coaching perspective, now that I'm getting older and coaching more, and what I see is what I, I want the kids and the young adults and even the adults to be the best they can be. And the older I get, the more I see like their, how their choices affect their results. And so I think in martial arts, it probably comes down to that. Like if I want my people that are part of my dojo, my school, my academy be successful I want them to have that the strongest character they can so that they can the results are the best that they can possibly do mm -hmm. so I'm trying to um, uh, you know transmit that type of stuff to them as quickly as I can so that they, they can get as good as they can in a short amount of time as possible right I coach right now high school wrestling and right now as part of our practice we have the guys visualize. We, after we show a move, we have them sit down, shut their eyes, visualize the move. Mm -hmm. Have them more think about it more intrinsically. As before, it was just shown and you go. Also, I'm bringing in more of that element of yes, sir, no, sir. Hey, when you talk to your coach, you just don't call us by name. You have to call us coach and say yes, thank you, you're welcome. So we really press it. One, because we want to help these kids out in life because a lot of them come from families that are really broken yeah. and they don't have any kind of role models and so mm -hmm. we're being those role models so we're helping them to be better people using the martial or using wrestling which like I said I consider that like martial arts it's combat mm -hmm. back and forth and you're developing yourself but we're really trying to say how can you be better today than we were yesterday how can you be a better person how is this going to make you better in school? This is going to help you when you get into life and you have per, you know stress and struggles yeah. and all these things. Where I'm trying to bring the elements that I have learned over the years of martial arts into the into the gym, and it's right. I think it's right. really making an effect. Well, you know, I, I've been to Thailand about seven times, and every time I would be there and I would uh, meet a Thai champion, they were the most soft-spoken, humble, and polite people I felt like I had ever come into contact with, and it strikes me that humility is a really important, uh, and politeness is a really important um, virtue when it comes to super high-level athletes. And like, uh, why would you? Why do you think that is? What well, is it? Is it because when you're humble, you're more open to learning, or, or? I think that, but also when you're looking at something like Thai boxing, or we see it at the higher levels of mixed martial arts. Yeah, definitely, you definitely. face defeat, and you realize. <laughs> You can get beat down just as fast as the other You've guy. you learned a bit of humility. Yes, and so you can't just go across. I mean, you have to be confident, and sometimes there's a little bit of show there. But for the most part, it's it's an act for those higher-level guys because mm -hmm. they realize one miss, and I'm getting yeah. taken out. So there's a lot more humility at the higher levels than there is, especially mm -hmm. at the lower levels. And you know, Especially when you think of Thai boxing, where those guys have hundreds of fights. So there's going to be... Yeah. A lot of losses, and some of those wins may not have been wins. Mm -hmm. Culturally, too, to be brash and arrogant, Thai culture is really not, it's not really acceptable. Right. You yeah. don't see to too much of that in any kind of, <laughs> yeah. in any kind of martial arts or culture. Or Japanese. Or, or Japanese. You know, yeah. Uh, any of the, any of the real, you know, deep, rich martial arts cultures, it's just, mm -hmm. you're more... Relax. You're you're humble. You have that loyalty and respect, mm -hmm. and it's you know it's like you're not trying to show that you're this great martial artist. 
you're just a, a person, but in that body, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's the the lack of humility and the lack of politeness is rooted in fear and insecurity a lot of times. That's it's a cover up, right? Sure. And when people that I know that are you know some of the toughest warriors I've ever met, you know, they don't have that type of fear. I mean, they have fear, but it's not that you know the kind that would um, you know cause them to to become super arrogant and and obnoxious, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, like, have you ever, if you guys had any other, like, major lessons in your life that you've gotten from uh, martial arts, not, not necessarily humility, but, you know, maybe bravery or, you know, fortitude or, or um, honor, you know, other types of virtues that have, that have, you think, had you not had martial arts, you wouldn't have as good of a life? I'd say for sure, all of, all of the above, but I would say that Kind of that perseverance of just continually training. For me, when I would train, I would show up, not just for me. Mm -hmm. I'd show up because if I didn't show up, my training partner wasn't going to be getting the work done that he needs to be a better person. So, man, sometimes I showed up probably when I shouldn't have showed up. I mean, you're sick, but you're like, I can't, I can't just stay home. I got to be there to hold pads. I got to be there to do what I have to do for my my training partner so there was such a connection between not just the training but making sure that my training partner was elevated to the to the level that I was and I was trying to push him as much as I wanted to be pushed mm -hmm. and I think that was huge and it paid off dividends obviously being yeah. pushed and pushed and pushed and then when I ran into my biggest battle with cancer that was just normal to mm -hmm. push and to fight and to keep grinding and then my training partners were there to help me battle it as well, so I mean, that became part very apparent. Yeah. All the years of grinding, that that was going to be there for you, sort yeah. of money in the bank that you had to take out at that time to use. Use you had accrued that, you know. If you wouldn't have had that, maybe you wouldn't have yeah. made that, made it through. Mm -hmm. so. Do you have any examples or any students even that you think that they're? I mean, how many people have we seen? completely changed their life I mean mm -hmm. I mean maybe they could have done it with sports or whatever but they were had such a passion for Muay Thai or for Jiu Jitsu mm -hmm. or, or this stuff that it completely turned their life around changed changed lifelong ingrained habits which is you don't see that very much so you know for me as well the martial arts has always been about learning about the process about developing about becoming better not about oh i'm gonna get this i mean you get these things along the way but it's like they're just little stopping points so i got that but now i want to continue on to train i want to build and that's leading it's now leading me into different areas that i never thought i would go into mm -hmm. you know public speaking conferences and i'm going to an acting one in may i mean it's because I want to learn, I want to become more involved, I want to be more of a communicator to be able to show the martial arts better and to teach more students and to portray what has helped me in my life to them. Yeah. Pass it on. Well, the environment that we're in is constantly with people who are trying to improve their life. They're yeah. trying to change their habits, trying to make their life better. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly around people yeah. who, are do who are trying to do that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that is really important people that you're around yeah yeah so suppose like um, people who are not living a good life or people who are could be living a better life you know what um, what would you prescribe as far as um, like a recipe right like how do you what are the best what are the most important habits you need to live a really good life to flourish well, I think a big part of developing habits to make it easier is first and foremost be around people yeah. that are living the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's huge because if you're trying to do it by yourself, which is how most like fitness gyms operate, you go there and you do a you know, weight routine and then you're on the treadmill and you're looking around and you're in this giant thing but you're not attached to anybody. There's no relationships built. And it, when we're in the martial arts, 
you're in that classroom and everybody's training with one another. It's a whole school talking, full of people trying yeah. to get better. And everybody, it's like the whole it's thing is huge. tide rises, every boat rises with it, and that's our mm -hmm. goal as a, as a school. I think that's huge. It makes it so much easier because now you have people supporting you. And you know, you know that there's going to be people there that are in the same boat as you, yeah. walk the same path as you. They started the first day like you. Now you build some friends. Now you want to be there. Yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. And once yeah. that happens, the rest just kind of takes over. Yeah, it's a lot more motivating when you're part of a, a group or a small group of people that are all focused on the same goals than if you're trying to do it by yourself. I mean, some people are pretty um, internally motivated to get up and do things, but I think for even for most of those people, um, you can only push yourself so hard, right? I feel like I get in front of the bag, hit the bag, I get, get pretty tired. But it's never like when someone's holding tie pads for me. Yeah. When I'm having to hit things and that person's standing there, like I feel a much more uh, intense feeling Absolutely. of tiredness and intense feeling of being pushed. And I mean, that's just how it seems to work, right? Yeah. So um, do you guys have any other um, parts of the recipe for the good life? Like if you were going to tell your kids you were going to write out a list of, you know, three or four things that were the most important Another, yeah. I think be part of a be be around good peers. Be around, yeah. you hang around nine broke people. You're about to be the tenth. Like, yeah. choose your friends wisely. I think another thing is huge is having a routine. Mm -hmm. You have a routine, and you stick to the routine because once you start to follow the routine, yes, then you get sidelined. So, I mean, for me, I have a, a morning routine when I wake up, and, and a routine before I teach, and I just have routines that I try to get into. And it just keeps me pushing a little bit more. Right? I have, I know where I want to go. I have this routine. It keeps me in line. I don't have to think. Mm -hmm. uh, should I go in today or shouldn't I? No, it's part of the routine. It's just what it is. Mm -hmm. And it, as we say, the bat. A lot of times, the battle is just getting in your car and driving. <laughs> and once you walk into the door, the battle's over because it just kind of takes over. And so, if you can get to that routine of just up, oh, just and you know. You know how good it's going to feel, and you tell yourself, man, it's going to feel so much better when I get there and I'm done. Like I told people, I said, you may have complained, ah, I don't know if I ever want to, I don't want to go today. But I guarantee no one else has ever said, man, I wish I never would have went to training today. No, they always say, man, I'm mm -hmm. glad I came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you know why you want to do it, it's going to be so much easier if you have those goals, like you, you want to get somewhere with it. It's going to be easier to get What here. if you don't know why? You ever have someone who's, who is struggling with yeah. trying to figure out with why they do? Why? Why, why should I get why up Why should I it? get up and do something that is Why should we do any of it? Discomfort. Yeah. Why should we do any of this? Right. I mean, if you feel that way, this that's going to be a problem. So how, how do we figure out why? Well, health and energy are really important yeah. um, reasons. You know, your long-term health and energy is an investment. It's Just good like enough. Other investment. You're going to feel way better. Whatever <laughs> it's going to be. If it's going to be martial arts or yoga or running or, mm -hmm. or CrossFit or whatever you might do, like that's a long-term investment in the quality of your life, you know, with the hopes that you will fall asleep and not wake up instead of be in hospice for the last five years of your life, you know, yeah. invalid. You know, and and those, that's what you're trying to invest in now. Yeah, quality of life is huge. And even with all those examples that you gave a big part of it is the people that are there yeah they're helping you they're pushing you they're pulling you they're guiding you you know they're they're there and that's such a huge huge thing it shapes your attitude about life right yep mm -hmm. your your social group and, um yeah go ahead and i think too like when you start to learn about training you, you realize you just you just do it you just learn how to just get stuff done. You just go. Once it's a ha once once yes. you form a new habit, it's it's easier to follow that habit, you know. Versus when you're starting a new habit, you know, it's like my my kid doesn't know how to brush his teeth, you know. Um, but I brush my teeth just automatically. I mean, I'm thinking about you know the news while I'm brushing my teeth, right? And doesn't I don't even remember half the time because it's just so habitual. And, Training a lot of times can it becomes like brushing your teeth or riding a bike or, sure. or anything else. I'm, I'm but thinking, getting into yeah. that zone can be painful. Yeah, 
change you want different results you got to do something differently mm -hmm. and it's uh you know having that that why i think is kind of important at first why do i want to be in here sometimes we have a lot of people that come in and say one thing but they really don't want that thing you know? yeah <laughs> they're looking for something else and the majority of the time they're looking for that health. connection the connection the health yeah. they want to feel better stress relief they don't want to fight energy yeah. They just say that because they think it's a martial arts gym. And well, people want to know if they could fight if they had to. Yeah. And right. I, I, and I yeah. think that's kind of something that obviously looms in the back of a lot of people's minds. For me, that literally was the reason why I, I wanted to do martial arts back in the day. But your job dictated that. Though, yeah. Right? I wanted to fight. I wanted to be a tougher. I wanted to be able to, you know, that. You happens. wanted to feel in control of that of that situation yeah I want to you, you needed to if you're you needed, if you're yeah. having to like hold people down and arrest them like yeah you know yeah and for me that was the it was this always this hey this happened let's try this let's do this let's, it was constantly for but you me, always had that love for martial arts we yeah. talked about that you're 12 years old with your nunchucks and yeah we just love that stuff it's a ninja mm -hmm. yep yeah total ninja <laughs> yeah so i mean that's the whole thing if you can Get a person started and get them to feel that fire. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Now that ember's burning, and they just want to go get some more gas to throw on it. Right on. Right on. <laughs> All right. Well, that that about covers it for this edition of the podcast. Uh, got any last words, guys? You know, which I always tell my kids: good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good <laughs> is better. If better is best. I used to hear that get said over the loudspeaker when Nina was doing gymnastics, all that stuff. But, you know, I think it's huge. Just doing a little bit better at everything. Good advice. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, remember, give us some likes. Go to our website. Check out all of our people. But big thing is, hey, subscribe. Pass us along. Tell people about the podcast. If there's something that you want to hear, write it in. Bring it in. We wanna. We wanna. Yeah. Leave a comment. Um. Or hit us up on Twitter at MMA Combat Zone. Yeah. Or on Facebook, uh, Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. And uh, we'd love to hear. We'd love to get feedback from everybody. All right.